Welcome to part two of my series of learning to juggle. In the first episode, we learned how to juggle with one ball, how to throw it properly, and how to catch it properly. As long as you get the timing right, everything else will follow. We're going to start with two balls of the same size and weight. It's possible, and not terribly difficult, to juggle with any two things, but for a beginner starting off, you'll want two balls that are even, round, and as close to the same as possible. This will make it much easier to cover up your inevitable mistakes. Remember, no matter how good you are, you'll always make them. Start off with your hands about shoulder width apart, your knees slightly bent. We're going to use the same technique as last time to make nice, clean, crisp throws. Again, we're aiming just above the head. We're also going to be aiming just in front of us at two points over our shoulder. One way to start off is to see if you can repeat what you did with one ball just holding the second ball. For now, we're not going to do anything special. Just hold it and try and throw nice, even throws without reaching up to catch them back and forth. Once you've thrown back and forth a few times, try to do both. In order to do two, you must make sure that you're doing it slowly. Your throws are going to be the same as they were with the first ball, but this time, as the first one reaches the peak of its arc, you're going to start to throw the second one. They'll take turns in the air. One will go up, and then the other will go up. One will go up, and then the other will go up. They won't go up at the same time. They won't go up in a circle with one being slammed down below. This is not helpful. They're not going to go up too high or too low. They're both going to go to the same height, and you're going to take turns. It often helps to say out loud, one, two, one, two, or up, 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 up. Repeating anything that reminds you to take time in between the throws will make it much easier to learn. It's not a race, and it doesn't matter how fast you go. The slower you go, and the better your traditional technique is, the easier it will be in the long run. If a ball goes forward, try to step into it rather than reaching out to catch it. Reaching out to catch it means that you're changing your arm position and becoming less stable. Moving into the ball keeps you in the same position. This is how many of the best professional jugglers do it. Some will tell you don't move your feet, but it's often best to keep below the objects if you make an error. Always emphasize though, the best throws and the best catches will yield the best results, whether or not it takes one time or a hundred times to get your throws exactly the same. Remember, you don't need to get everything exactly the same all the time. It's just going to help you make it easier to add things on and create new tricks. And don't be afraid to try out three balls seriously, even if you're not all that solid at this stage yet. Right now, the last thing you need is to become scourged or caught up trying to be completely perfect. There's many tricks you can do with two balls. This is one of the best ways to start to develop tricks for all three objects. One important trick for two balls, or even for three or more, is called a multiplex. In multiplexing, we throw more than one object from the same hand at the same time. There's no other rules. Hold the balls together with your wrists slightly bent and the balls at a small angle. From this position, you can throw a multiplex where they split and one goes considerably higher than the other. 
As you throw them and as you flick your wrist to release, you can try to see if you can get them to tumble over each other to make one quite a bit higher than the other. Another way to do a multiplex is to hold the balls together and your hand in a straight, flat position. This will allow them to split so that they more or less come up to the same position in the air, but they split apart. This is a very useful multiplex once again, and often done with a high number of objects. The more perfect you make this split, the better it'll look. Finally, you can throw a multiplex and catch them in the same hand. There's two main ways to do this. First, you can throw them at different heights, and then catch them one after the other. Second, you can throw them together in a tight-knit bundle. This way, they'll be thrown from one hand to the other without ever really coming apart. This is a very nifty trick, but there's not a lot that people do with it. There's many other ways to launch multiplexes, and many other ways to catch them. You can mix it up by catching one one way, and one another way. Here's a few simple ways that you can catch a multiplex. In the next episode, we'll be looking at how to take the basic throws for one ball and two balls and use them to learn how to juggle all three.